All right, guys, today we're going to go over some tests that you have to do before you ever condemn a module. Let's get into it. Here's the scenario. You've got a module. You've, you've condemned a module of some type. I don't care, engine module, analog brake module. It, it doesn't matter. You've condemned a module. You say, I, that module is bad. Before you actually say that module is bad, this is a test that you must perform on it. I get a lot of pushback on this. I get, I get people saying, oh, it takes so much time to do this. It, it, it doesn't take a lot of time. And what does take a lot of time is not doing this, putting the module in it, and having the same problem. Now you're definitely going to be into some time. And you've got a module in it. So, the, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a voltage drop test on the powers and grounds. And we're getting set up to do this video, and I got a... A message from somebody and it says uh, what are your thoughts on circuit voltage drop testing versus circuit load testing okay and it's a great question um, because you have to load the circuit to voltage drop test the circuit you guys have seen our videos where we test like starters and things like that you know we're, we're you know we're like you got to crank the engine you know, if you're going, to, if you're going to voltage drop test from the, you know, positive of the battery down to the positive of the starter, you've got to crank the engine in order to do that. And if you don't, it's a, it's a wasted test. So you have to be under a load. Well, all right. How are we going to do that with a module? So let's take an engine control module as a perfect example. Engine control module. What does it use the powers and grounds for? Well, it uses them to turn on things like coils you know to fire the coils fire the fuel injectors solenoids you know whether it be vvt solenoids you know any any dip you know uh, um, purge valve solenoid so you've got loads that are happening when the when the engine control when this vehicle's running when the engine control module is is needing to turn certain things on and off and it's certainly a case that that can be made to do that dynamically with the engine running while you're looking for the problem so if you've got an intermittent problem, let's say that only happens every once in a while, whatever it may be, you might say, you know, well, I'm losing some signal to, to let's say a coil or whatever. And you might go, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get into the powers and grounds on this thing. And while I'm test driving this to see if I lose, you know, maybe one of those voltage, you know, maybe one of those drops out, we've got a bad connection on something. Certainly you can do that, but that's not always the the easiest thing to do and it's not always necessary in this case we've proved out we've got a whole video on this vehicle um, we're not going to get into that you guys watch the video on that but we've proved out that this module is not able to to do to fire a certain component or do it properly it does all the other ones perfectly so i feel like the powers and grounds are going to be fine but i can't skip that step just because i think oh it fires everything else fine it's it's going to be okay no I've got to be able to, to say 100% without doubt, this thing's able to carry all the load that it needs to on the powers and grounds. So we've got a couple of ways that we need, that we can do that with. So we've got, um, we've got a few, we're gonna do a whole video on some of these tools that we have here on these three tools. So these three tools are made by three great guys. They're small guys and, and they, they make each one of these things by hand. Uh, we're going to do a video on these and show these how to use them what you know what why they're different uh, What they can do differently from each other because they all have a place And we're gonna do the whole video on that in this particular one. I just want to make it quick and easy uh, it, I've just got a bulb so we've got to have something that's going to load the circuit down That's going to pull some amperage through the circuit, right? So we got Micah back here with some glasses on what are you doing with the glasses Mac man? Love it love that face you're going to learn how to do some voltage drop testing today. So we've got to have something that's going to pull some amps on this circuit. So what I've got here is just this bulb. This one is going to pull two amps, right? So I always test, you know, even when I buy these things, we know. And the bulbs you put in can make a difference. And if you hook both of these up, it's going to be, you know, both of these up, it'll be different. But we're just going to do one. It's going to pull two amps. That's plenty to, for me anyway, to know that this is good. If we need to do more of a load than that, we've got other options for that. And that's what the other video is going to be about. So look for that one. So how do we need to do this? What are the steps that skipped? A lot of times, here's what happens is somebody will say, oh, I'm going to use a test light. And I'm going to 
hook that up and I'm just gonna back probe. Do I have power? Yeah, and then I'll put it on the ground side. And do I have ground? Yeah. The problem is that this, this is not pulling much at all. We have some test lights that we've made that uh, will pull one amp. They're definitely handy to have, but a regular test light is not gonna do it. A power probe is not gonna do it. It's not gonna load it down. So we need something that's gonna load it. At the same time we load it, here's a lot of times what'll happen. First of all, let me show you how I'm hooked up. I've got this jumper lead. I've got it connected to the ground side of this bulb. All right, I'm gonna take that. The ground, it doesn't really matter what side I have it hooked to. I could swap these around. I'm just pulling, it's just a bulb. It doesn't matter which way it flows, okay? I'm gonna take that because I'm gonna check the powers first. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna ground this at the battery ground. And I'm gonna take this side, so let's take that off. Now I have a bulb. I know it looks funky. Let's, let's try to simplify this. I've got a wire coming into a bulb and I've got a piercing probe on the other end. If I take that piercing probe, I touch it to the positive battery post, all I'm doing is going from negative to positive, right? And I'm just lighting a bulb. Okay. I see a lot of guys will come in and they will just do that. If it lights the bulb, I'm good. And generally you're right, but the, the, the next step to do is to have a multimeter or something, you can have a scope, a meter, Either way, you guys say, I don't ever use a meter. We're gonna use a meter for this. I, I, I definitely use a meter for this all the time. And I'm just gonna, because this is really easy to use on this one, I'm just gonna put the meter and back probe it into this banana clip where I'm on the same circuit as the positive side, okay? Now, if I go to this battery and I do that and the load, this lights up, look at my meter. I got, I got battery voltage, okay? Now, what will happen is, if you go to this on something bad, if you go here and the light is dim and you've got less than your voltage, your battery voltage, your system voltage, whatever you're supposed to have, if you've got less than that, then that means you've got a voltage drop. And I promise you, if you just took the meter and you went like that, you would show the correct voltage. So hopefully one day in the future we can get a bad one and we can show you, but what would happen is we would be, you would show a good voltage and then if you touched your bulb to it at the same time that would drop down that voltage would drop down and sometimes the bulb will not light at all but the bulb is pulling every single bit out of that and this will actually drop down to almost nothing so that's why you want to have your meter there because you want to know okay do i continue to maintain voltage good voltage while i'm pulling two amps okay so now we got that hope that makes sense here's how i go about looking at what i need to find what terminals do I need to get into, right? I'm not gonna sit there and just, you know, definitely not gonna back probe every single terminal in there. It wouldn't be good to do that anyway. So what I'm gonna do is, we come over, and this is how I do it. Oh, whoops. I will look at, one, the wiring diagram. So I'd come in here, I'd grab the wiring diagram, and I would just find my powers and grounds in the wiring diagram. I'm not gonna sit here and you know, this isn't a wiring diagram video. We're not gonna sit here and show all this, but I would just come in here and see that. Now, if you notice, down here, we have a, a, this is the module, right? So that module, if we come over here onto this part of it, you'll see that that says powertrain control module, right? And people will look at that and go, well, I mean, clearly that's not every single wire that goes into the powertrain control module, right? That's not every single circuit. So you gotta look around you got to see that that powertrain control module is in different spots, right? So there's powertrain control module. Here's powertrain control module. Here's powertrain control module. All right, so we're going to just, I always look at those to see, you know, where are my powers and grounds so I don't miss anything. And then I highlighted them on here and I looked at my, my pin numbers. Uh, basically, I'm looking at my, connect, uh, my connector number. But I'll look at the pin number too. So we come over there, we got that connector and we got a disconnector. So we got C1 and C4. Now, another good thing, just I know it's not a wiring diagram class, but you know, I was doing a class with Brian Mann the other day and um, something that he brought up that I don't think I've ever mentioned in a video is, if you look on this engine control module and you see the dotted line around this engine control module, so if we see that dotted line on it, 
then that's going to tell you that that's not the entire circuit, the entire wiring diagram for that component. There is more to it than that. So if we come down here to the throttle position sensor, you can see that that's a sol solid line all the way around it. That's every single circuit that goes to the throttle position sensor is shown right there. But if we come over to something that's got a dotted line around it, here's a generator, right? Dotted line around it, that's not every circuit going to that generator, okay? All right, so once I see those, the pinouts, I'm gonna go and pull up my actual connector view. I'm gonna look at this, right? And then I'm going to just mark it out. Now these yellow, the yellow, green, blue, red, purple, those are in the previous video. I just marked the two grounds on this so that I can see they're in pin 12 and pin 13. I'm gonna look up here to see where those are at. And then I've also, so that is connector um, C4. And then we can also look at connector C1. And here is our grounds, here and here. Here is our um, battery feed coming in, which is, I'm sorry, this red one here is our battery positive coming in, that's, that's red. And then I've got two oranges and those oranges are ignition. So I'm gonna have to turn the ignition on and uh, go to the crank, this one's gonna be go to the crank position. So you can see I have down here, I have it highlighted start. And this one is run and start, all right? So now we know what's gonna have what and when it's gonna have it, you know, determined on the key position. The grounds should always be ground. So right now, we've got the key off. I've got Dustin sitting in the car. He's ready to do his thing, but the key is off. I've got my meter hooked up, and we're gonna go in, and we're gonna start with C1, which is this connector. And then I'm gonna put my glasses on because we don't wanna do the wrong thing here. And we are set up, actually, we're set up to check powers right now. So we're gonna do powers first because I don't wanna confuse you guys. So I want, you know, it's on the, ground side of the battery go into this bulb so as soon as i put power to this bulb we're going to light the bulb okay so dustin go ahead and switch the key just to on you got it on okay so the first one i'm going to go to is well actually turn the key off for me dustin real quick i'm going to go to i'm going to go to pin 29 and 29 is a red wire it's in a corner so if I'm looking at it here, 29 is gonna be here. So if I touch this, we should have the light light up, which it does. And we look at our meter, we have 12.69 volts. So we've got system voltage with a load on it. Is that circuit able to carry a load? Absolutely. We do not have any voltage drop. It's carrying the load, it's lighting the bulb. We're perfect, right? All right, go ahead and switch the key to on. Now we're gonna to go to pin 12. So that's one through 10. That's 11 and 12. So we're gonna go one through 10, 11, 12. We've got power there. Look at our, now that's through a switch, right? That's gonna be through a switch or a relay of some type. So we see we do have a little bit less. It's, it's you know, three, four tenths of a volt. We're fine there. Uh, go ahead and switch the key off. We're gonna see it go away. There it goes, done. All right, so we're good there. If you start getting into a one volt, one and a half volt voltage drop, one volt, you know, we're, we're, we're starting to push on the, on the limits there, depending on the circuit size, depending on the circuit size. All right, now let's go to our pin 30, which is gonna be right next to the 29. So we're gonna be here. All right, so we've got nothing. Go ahead and go to, go to uh, turn it to on position. We're gonna get nothing. You're on. All right, now go to hold it in the crank position. There we go. Crank position, we've got lit up. Look at our here. Again, a little bit, but you know, we're good. All right, five, six tenths, we're good. All right, all right, that's our powers. Our powers are done. We know our powers are good. We've got everything we need there. Now we got to do the ground side. And we, we, you know, I see the ground side get overlooked a lot. A lot, everybody wants to focus on that power. We see a lot more ground problems than we see power problems. So we want to make this easy. We don't want to sit there and have to change a bunch of leads around and you know, positives to positive and negative. I don't care about that. All we want to do is take the, the bulb, right? This is the bulb part of it, move it over to power. So now one side of my bulb is connected to power, okay? If I touch this side to ground, the bulb is going to light up. I'll show you. The bulb lights up if I touch it to ground now. Makes sense. The other thing we got to do is move the meter lead. So my meter lead was on ground because I was checking for power. 
Now I'm going to take my meter lead. I know it's the negative lead. I don't care. I'm going to put it on power. I'm trying to do this fast. I'm not trying to swap a bunch of stuff around. We could certainly swap a bunch of stuff around and get... The only thing we're going to see now is when I take this, because I've got this hooked up to the ground side now, when I take this and touch it to that negative post, this is going to come up with a negative number. So we're still coming up with battery voltage. We got a negative number. Forget the negative number. I don't care about that. All right. It's just because I've got the leads hooked up backwards. It's irrelevant. It just makes it fast. I hope that doesn't confuse anybody. I hope you're okay with that. Um, if it does, let me know in the comments and we'll try to do a follow-up video where we show you why that is or you know, how, you could, how you can move them around. All right, so you got the key off? Key off. All right, so now we're gonna do our grounds. So we're still at connector C1. So we're gonna go with pin nine and pin 18, nine and 18. The good thing about these things are, a lot of times they put these powers and stuff and grounds really close to each other. So this is pin nine, because that's 10. So I'm gonna to touch it here. My light's lit up, as you can see, and look up the meter, 12.74, right? So we're good there, absolutely beautiful. Forget about the negative, doesn't matter, right? So if that's nine, that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, it's the only one over here anyway. It's got a pin in it, it's pin 18, it's right below the other one. It lights up, and we got 12.74. Are those two grounds able to carry the load that we need them to carry, 100%. We're beautiful there, right? All right, now we've got to go to the other connector. So we're gonna go over here, and this is pins 12 and 13. So 10, so we're gonna look at this with this way again. 10, 11, 12, and 13 are gonna be these two pins here. So we're gonna to touch that one. Here's our, here's our light lit up. Meters 12.74, beautiful. Go to the next one, lights lit up, 12.74, 12.73. Okay, now we just did a video. You guys saw how long it took to do, you're good, Dustin. You guys saw how long it did, did it take that? Yes, does it take a couple of minutes to look this up and to determine which wire's what? Yeah, but if you've condemned a module already or if you know the module's bad, you're already in these wiring diagrams. You've had to look at the wiring diagrams and you've probably looked at the connector views to be able to determine what the test to, to condemn the module, right? So it's not like it took a ton of time to, to pull these up because we we're pretty much already in them. And the only other thing you got to do now is have some type of a load, okay, and your meter or your scope, however you want to do it. So this is not a difficult task, but boy, I tell you what, it will save your butt if you do this because you will find problems at some point in your career when you're doing this you will find a ground issue you will find a power issue that bulb will go dim it won't light up at all your meter will show zero or the bulb will be dim the meter will show something less than than uh your system voltage and you will be like oh my goodness and then you will fix that connection issue or that contact or maybe a ground connection and you'll be just a hero because you've just fixed a car for all i mean i've had it happen where people have put two or three models in there and it ended up being a ground issue so this is something to, to get good at, get quick at it, know what you're doing, be slow the first time, be slow the first few times. Double check where you're probing, make sure that you're, you know, got, it, it's gonna be hard to damage things, but you don't wanna be putting things into, don't do it with it connected, do it with it disconnected, and, and you know, know what wire you're putting into. Don't get in here and jam all in there and you know, spread out terminals. Just a light touch is all you need, okay? So there it is, guys. That's a, that's a quick and easy one on how to do this, how to do it professionally, how to do it the right way. We're going to do another video with these, other, with these other load boxes. I think you're going to like that and have you some different options. And um, we appreciate it. If you like it, thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment in here. Hit that bell notification so you know every time we, leave, we drop a video. We appreciate you guys. We'll see you in the next one.